Yeah, thanks, Ali, for the uh, the introduction. You can you can, you can skip that slide, really. Um, so, uh, currently at the lab uh, with Brad Boyce, we're leading a, a large project which is called like Beyond Fingerprinting, uh, which basically focuses on AI guided processes for uh, material reliability. And really, this project it's a large it's a large project. It's about fifteen millions over three years, and some of the members of the audience right now are actually on our external advisory board, so they've probably seen some of these slides before. But really, this project is about changing the way uh, we do material science at the lab. Uh, and and really, we have like three things that we're spending a lot of time on. The first thing is trying to approach material synthesis measurements and modeling differently. Uh, and really here what we're trying to achieve is producing large, uh, low cost and consistent data sets. And our project is called Beyond Fingerprinting because our hypothesis is that in these like large data sets, there are fingerprints that we can detect uh, either during the synthesis or through measurements uh, coupled with modeling and then learn and prognose from uh, these detectable fingerprints such that down the road, uh, we can adapt our uh, synthesis process. Um, so, you know, as part of this, you know, what we're trying to do is like trying to like do like rapid explorations of hundreds to like a thousand different types of like process conditions in a matter of day. So it's a, you know, it's a dramatic shift in terms of like paradigm, in terms of like, again, the way we do uh, material science. And kind of like the, the cog that makes it work is basically using AI algorithms where we embed our own expertise uh, through like physical knowledge to basically help us uh, interpret the data, uh, understand the process structure property paradigm through this like again detect prognose adapt, uh, such that then we can rapidly adapt uh, our processes and also like discover new types of mechanisms and materials. So you can go to the next slide, Austin. Uh, and so really there are what we've been facing as a team, uh, you, you can basically bin them into like four barriers for adoption. Uh, the first barrier for adoption is a, a psychological barrier, uh, you know, where what we've seen is like there's like a resistance to basically replace proven approaches that, you know, have been developed over many years uh, with something that is you know less familiar that is new so there's like this like you know activation barrier before we can adopt these new types of technologies the second barrier is uh, an an, an inter intellectual barrier uh you know we, we we're all went uh you know to school we have like it's like thirds for like you know knowledge uh and so we have a need for like basically uh understanding the data, understanding what we're doing. And so again, sometimes when you think about AI, a lot of people think about this as black box, but you know, really what we wanna have is like this like glass box where we know what's inside and we can make sense of it. Um, the third uh, barrier is uh, an infrastructure barrier. Uh, so it's one thing to have like, you know, the best algorithms uh, in the world uh, but, you know, we have to come up with like ways by which we can intelligently collect data, manage the data and do the analysis. Uh, and then the last barrier is a, uh, an algorithmic barrier. Uh, so there's like limitation with like the existing suites of algorithms that are out there uh, that not necessarily applicable to, you know, different types of like scientific domains in our case, which is like, you know, material science and synthesis. Uh, and even more to this, uh, if you look at the literature, there's like, you know, it's like mushrooms. These algorithms are just like popping up left and right. And it's very hard to keep up with like the state of the art. And so you can basically kind of like take this like four barriers and, and think about, you know, things that we have to think about. The first one is on what, what I call like show me the data. So again, as like material scientists, you know, we are very small when it comes to data as compared to like other type, you know, other types of fields. And so we have to come up with like ways by which we can collect, uh, you know, a lot of data, but with diversity. Okay, so volume is important, uh, but we need diversity in data. The second one is expert in the loop. So that kind of like relates to like this, like, you know, um, intellectual need that we have for like infusing our knowledge into like these different types um, of algorithm. And it's also like, a, you know, again, a, a shift in paradigm in terms of like the way we need to think about this. 
uh, so thinking about like hypothesis driven type of design and then let this type of algorithm take over from there. So, you know, again, we have to start like changing the way we do, we do, um, we, we do this type of, of activities. The trust to trust enough, again, here we have this like psychological barrier to trust uh, machine learning algorithm and AI uh, algorithm. And where the material science community is going with this is like, you know, thinking about this in terms of like physics informed. Uh, but again, there's a lot of, you know, a lot of ground that needs to be uh, covered. Uh, the speak the same language. Um, so he, here it's more related to like the infrastructure barrier that we have. Um, you know, a lot of people in the community are thinking about like ontology. So here the idea is like, we need to have some like standards by which we can communicate and speak like the same language. So it's like right now, if you look at the literature, it's kind of like, like applications of like the way people do it. Oh, somebody hate this. <laughs> uh, but that's fine. Um, I would remind everyone to mute if you're not the speaker. Unless uh, you really want to vent. <laughs> but yeah, ontology is a, a debated and heated topic, maybe. Uh, the ML for everyone, uh, here it's more like related to like this like uh, algorithmic barrier. There's like this like introduction uh, barrier for, you know, we have like some people on our team, you know, they've been doing the same thing for like, and, and being very successful like what they're doing for like 30 years and learning new programs, uh, learning new types of like, you know, methods for like doing data analysis uh, is not something that, that that's obvious. And, and so th there's like some, you know, barriers that we have to overcome for like coming up with solutions for de democratization of like basically machine learning approaches for material science. Uh, and so if you take these like five bullet points, that means we need to be prepared for failure. Uh, we're not always going to be successful. There's going to be bad data out there. There's going to be bad interpretation of that data. There's going to be bad use of quote unquote black box uh, uh, algorithm. And so we need to be prepared for failure and we need to be also willing to uh, be open and document uh, those failures. So moving forward, um, you know, th there's a couple of activities that we're thinking would be uh, useful in terms of like workforce development. What we've seen recently is some schools are offering joint degrees in material science and computer science. And so these are basically the future of our workforce. And, and, and I'm, I'm sure like, you know, there's a lot of like different universities that are thinking of like the way they can craft that, uh, you know, even better. But th that's one direction that as a community we need to take. Um, the other uh, options or opportunity that we have as a community is large data exchange platforms. Uh, so right now it's very customized. Uh, that's one of the, again, the barrier for like people to kind of like, you know, you need to have access to data, uh, but you need to have access to data. It's like well-documented, you know what, 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 you, what, what you're looking at and you have to have some pedigree. Um, another type of activities that we should be thinking about is round robbing benchmarking. So, and, and the idea behind this is like to basically foster, you know, best practice on how to do and how to use these type of tools, how to collect data, uh, exchange, uh, you know, ideas on like how you do high throughput characterization uh, and, and rapid data collection. Uh, and that has to be basically paired with uh, standardization. And I guess like the last maybe like suggestions would be to start thinking of like tech incubator uh, to basically move from right now, which is like more like uh, TRL one and two to something that like people can take uh, uh, in the market uh, and cross this like value of death.